Starting up the engine, so my name is um, Tony Alatalo and I actually used to work on uh, Blender development earlier, back in, uh, like, I don't know, five or more years ago, and started originally with the Blender game engine, and it's always fun here to see uh, a lot of nice usage of that. But nowadays, um, we have a different project, this uh, Real Extend, and, and we are using Augur, because um, we do uh, real-time uh, networked stuff. And, um, and here's the, um, the application. Um, here's one scene, scene running in, uh, in Augur, and this is the, uh, I just men mentioned also in the text, uh, it's modeled after, like inspired by a real life location uh, in the United States. Uh, there's a place called Chesapeake Bay, which is quite famous for the, uh, for the nature there. Um, there's like a lot of interesting animals, the Maryland uh, blue crab and, and um, big uh, birds and fishes and all. And, and then uh, this beautiful uh, white-tailed deer. So uh, this is a kind of a demo we, we made of this uh, new, uh, new platform. Uh, so this, all this stuff is uh, with uh, Creative Commons license and um, like an open source project on its own. Um, and it's all made in, uh, made in Blender, the modeling and, uh, and the animate animations. And, uh, and then there's some uh, games and scripting. Scripting, uh, there's some uh, like walk path uh, stuff that some of the animals walk around and, and so forth. But I'm also using this same uh, environment to, uh, to show my slides. So, so this uh, whole real extent project is um, like there's this word called um, the 3D internet and and uh, and it's kind of an own thing and um, but it's sort of the background of the pro project anyway that um, that there's some people who have this idea that um, that the internet could be like a thing um, like this kind of a virtual world where there's places that you can visit and um, and it's uh, a lot all um, inspired by Second Life, and, and that's also where the history of the, uh, of the Real Extend project goes to. Um, it's this guy, uh, this guy, Juha Hulko, his avatar in Real Extend is uh, like a Finnish businessman, and, and um, he, after doing uh, like an earlier company, um, he discovered Second Life in 2007 or something, and thought that it would be interesting to have this technology that you can just make spaces and have people visit them and, and meet other people there. And, but he didn't like the idea that there's one company that uh, controls it all and, and uh, that you have to pay money to get servers and stuff. So, um, so he started this open source project and gathered some companies. And I'm from this uh, PlaySign company. We are a small game company, and, and we are interested in this because we have been making game prototypes with Ogre uh, already earlier, uh, just single-player demos. But we want to make those games uh, multiplayer, and that's what uh, this platform gives us, that um, it's easy to make multiplayer games and other applications. So um, a little bit about the stuff that has been done. Um, we made this kind of a project with schools, um, back home, it has been in pilot use by uh, both like um, primary school and like even ten year old kids and and then up to uh, to high school where you can easily uh, like you don 't have to be a three d modeler you can just uh, add your own images and and sounds and text and stuff easily in a three d environment and make galleries and exhibitions and presentations and and this uh, si system and the tools and this environment is on a public server on the net so you can just uh, Visit it from the uh, relaxten.org, and um, but so the, basically the, the, our main uh, thesis is that uh, um, like for people who know OpenSim and Second Life and that there's this kind of fixed model that what a world is like that there's land and and you walk on it and all that but but this uh, system that we have now is like a totally modular and customizable so you can make any kind of application. I've been using this word application, and, 
And I'm a bit scared that does that mean anything for Blender people, but so it's really happy today to see that um, Japanese uh, presentation about the, uh, the school uh, scheduling information, because that was like a perfect example of, um, of, um, of an application. It was not a world or something like that, and it was not a game, but just uh, an application that's using this technology. So we think of this as an application platform for all kinds of applications and games and multiplayer games are, are one application. So here's a little uh, diagram that I drew this morning that is for like technical folks basically shows a bit what we have. So we call this a Tundra um, software development kit and the stuff in, uh, in purple is, is what is always there and, and um, like the core and the, and the library dependencies that we always need and we try to keep that quite small. But then uh, it's a modular system so if you want to just, uh, for example, make a game in C++, uh, you can just skip all the extra stuff that you don't like uh, but, and write your own module, uh, module um, using the core services and, and, uh, and do that. Or otherwise you can just use the, uh, like the, how it is by default and, uh, and uh, for example, make all sorts of functionality in, uh, in JavaScript. Like, for example, this uh, slideshow uh, thing is uh, just a JavaScript thing. And there's a couple of other examples. Here's a little uh, beginning of a game that some French folks made. Um, that guy had used Flash earlier, and he just made a test if he can make something uh, like 3D. And, um, and he managed. So this is just like a physics uh, thing that you can... Uh, the goal is to try to... Uh, to like shoot with the cannon and and try to uh, you have to reload the cannon and then shoot again and and you get points when the uh, when the boxes uh, drop drop from the uh, from the platform but you only have three uh, three shots and and um, here's another little game prototype um, by our company uh, the, the idea is that you visit these uh, planets and for example on this planet. Uh, you encounter these kind of enemies, and, uh, and it's like a fast uh, action game. Game, you, there you, you see the game character, and when you're actually playing, then uh, it's like this kind of controls that you just move the, uh, the target where your guy goes, and uh, it's like lo rotating the planet. And it's just a little um, prototype that we uh, had made earlier using Ogre, and, um, and uh, have been now. Um, Porting to uh, to real extent because it's planned as a multiplayer game and and we get the uh, multiplayer stuff with this easily. Okay, um, well I guess I have to demo the uh, the networking stuff. So I try to do that quick so I get to show the Blender stuff also. Um, uh, so I'm now starting um, another instance of the application and um, so what what is uh, shown there is actually now running as a server in, in server mode so other uh, clients can connect to it and this is what our client startup looks like um, there's kind of like two things um, it has a it actually works also as a web browser. So uh, it now just went to our website, and from there you can log in to, uh, to the public uh, server. But, uh, but I can also just log in to, uh, to the server that I'm, I'm running here, which is showing on the background. And um, I think it's connecting now. So now, in, in this client mode, I get this uh, custom uh, user interface that's made for this place um, w w that I can use to uh, start the games and stuff. And um, if we look here, here on the server, um, the guy should be uh, visible here as well. There he is. So now if I position the, uh, 
the camera correctly. Um, and switch to the client. Oops. Yeah, now you, saw, now you can see a little guy move uh, on the server. On the server as well. And these things here I can start to use to um, start the game. So, well, I guess I showed the... Uh, here's the little guy on the, uh, on the server, if, if nobody noticed. And, um, and one of the games is um, where you have to fly as an, um, as an osprey, like a, this kind of an eagle-like thing, and you have to uh, try to catch fish with the, by diving diving with the, uh, with the thing. And then, and then there's another game where, where, the, uh, where you swim as a little, uh, little anchovy fish, and, and you can actually collaborate, because uh, this, this bird eats the, uh, the bigger fishes that eat l the little fishes that your friend perhaps is. So that's how you can, it's like a three-step three, uh, three uh, food chain thing and and um, yeah if we look here and uh, lucky enough uh, we can see the bird flying somewhere but but uh, okay now I go to the blender blender part mm. Do -do -do. just a sec Killing bees. Mm. Don't you love those dolls? Uh, okay, so um, here's Blender. And um, well, you could use the uh, the Osprey. So here's the uh, the bird that you saw in the uh, in the game world, and and now uh, now I have this uh, add-on installed. So there's this extra button uh, called Ogre. I just enable that. I get these extra buttons, this world thing. Uh, I can just uh, click this, and um, what it does now is that it exports the uh, the selected objects to uh, to the ogre format, and then it launches the uh, the tundra system. So uh, so we have it here now, and and then we can um, use the normal uh, Blender authoring stuff to uh, to uh, to do things. For example, I can just add a uh, add a um, hemi lamp and um, and set the color for it and so forth. But let's see if it already by default. Yeah, now I got some uh, light there. So the idea is that we can use Blender for the uh, for the authoring and uh, we don't have to redo Blender, but we can still use this uh, inherently networked and game um, suitable uh, powerful engine. And um, this is stuff, the, the Blender integration is really new. Uh, one of the new things there is now that, um, that it's quite handy to um, preview uh, animations, because you can just select the, uh, the animation in, uh, in Blender and then it shows in, the, uh, in Ogre. Is that the gliding animation? Yeah. And um, and yeah, I can just also just uh, move the object in uh, in Blender, and it moves uh, moves in the uh, in this game server. And I can um, add new objects. So if I, for example, add a um, Suzanne here, mm. somewhere, and um, I think I need to select this both. Now also, uh, yeah, Suzanne also appeared there, and, uh, and then I can use, uh, oh, that was the lamp. I can use uh, Blender to, uh, to place Suzanne where I want, and, and so forth. But also this, uh, 
this Tundra application itself um, is quite. Um, mm, oh, which button did I press? Because I don't see anything myself. Is that the maximize thing? Well, it doesn't matter. It has a quite nice editor where you can see the uh, like all the data and edit and and the idea is that. Um, Mm. So, for example, here we see the uh, Suzanne, I think, do we? That all the data, um, like we have this uh, automatically generated uh, user interface for manipulating all the scene data. And, and the, the trick is that if you make a game with custom data, um, this editor and everything works for your data types, also your custom uh, components. and and. Uh, and all that data is automatically synchronized uh, over the net. So if you, for example, make a door and, and want the door to be uh, so that you can lock it, and then if you want some client-side functionality, for example, that when the mouse cursor ho hovers over an object, uh, depending whether the object is locked or not, the cur cursor is different. Um, to do that sensibly, you, every client needs to know whether the, lock is, whether the door is locked or not. And that's just automatic here. You just um, Create the door component and put an attribute there that locked, and then you just modify that one uh, value, and and it's synchronized uh, to all the participants. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff I could show. I'm sorry I lost time because of uh, technical stuff and the schedule and all, but but that was the uh, the very basics basics anyway. And um, yeah. We are using this to uh, to do projects for customers in uh, several companies, and um, well, all the companies want to grow as well. So we are open for uh, proposals if somebody wants some uh, multiplayer game or whatever. Um, but it's also all there, just free to use, um, as is or as basis for your own engine or or whatever. So uh, yeah. If there's time, I'm happy uh, if there's questions or, or something. Um, there's quite a lot in the Blender user interface. Mm. And there's nice uh, demo videos of that now, how, how you can uh, configure normal mapping and uh, all sorts of stuff to. Uh, so if you just search for, uh, if you search for Blender to Ogre in, uh, in YouTube, uh, there's um, there's some pretty cool uh, stuff. These are not, I think, the newest ones, but but anyhow. And um, yep, we also have a WebSockets client. Perhaps I end by a. Uh, oh shit! I can't see anything. Sorry. I have to type here because I can't see them. So um, yeah, if somebody doesn't know what WebSockets and WebGL is, is, is the, it means that there's now um, in new browsers, uh, in new Firefox and in new Chrome, um, there's uh, this functionality that, um, oh, ah, it went to a different screen. Um, so what we see here is that uh, on this right side here, I have this native uh, client which uh, I was using, but on the left side there's um, just a normal Chrome, and um, but also this uh, this web client thing in uh, in Chrome is connected with uh, with WebSockets to the uh, to the same server, so uh, so the movement is synchronized. So actually with this system. Uh, if I'm connected also from Blender to the same server, I can move objects in Blender and, and see them move in a, in a web browser. And, and the rendering here is just a WebGL. Um, so there's no uh, plugins or anything. It, it's just a, a JavaScript uh, engine. So we are actually quite happy to have this both, that we have the powerful native uh, Augur thing uh, that can render at least three or even six uh, viewports for caves. Like there's a, some people have built these ca caves now where you get like real immersion and, 
So you, um, so you get, got, get all this power and you can use uh, Kinect input and uh, all that. But then for people uh, who just um, need to see something then, uh, and who don't want to install anything and, uh, and so forth, then, uh, then this is kind of like a light uh, client with the uh, just uh, browser-based. But yeah, thanks for the, uh, for the interest. And sorry for the delay. <laughs> Yeah, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't currently do any uh, synchronization among uh, like multiple blenders. It's um, because we are mostly using uh, Blender just when uh, authoring when making a scene and tweaking materials. And so we're mostly using it this, for this um, preview thing. But it could be used also to, uh, to synchronize uh, multiple blenders. And, and um, I was myself using the verse uh, thing earlier that, and um, a little bit involved in the development. And, and, um, but now we're actually using much uh, simpler techniques and, Actually, something that Theo had, has done earlier we, from between Blender and Real Extent, we just send uh, like Python pickles, so it's easy to do anything, and and then uh, and then for this like other clients, it's uh, also kind of a simpler protocol. Yeah, it's it's an interesting uh, idea, but uh, but we are not doing it. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually use the same code base both for uh, servers and clients. So, so even uh, just on a server, there's also Ogre running, but it's just not doing any rendering. rendering. It's like a headless uh, Ogre. But um, that's one um, one I think big ad advantage that we have compared to this uh, Second Life and Open Simulator thing, because there's this one company that's making the open source client, but then there's a separate server project and they don't share any code. It's much easier to add new features when there's a single code base and, and, um, and it's just an issue of matter of configuration whether you are a client or server and perhaps uh, we do some peer-to-peer -peer stuff uh, later on, but, but yeah, so. Um, if somebody wants to try the uh, the application, I also have the installers for Linux and Mac and uh, and Windows on my memory stick, so it's easy to test uh, if it works on your computer and and there's public uh, servers online and so forth. So, so um, yeah, you can test stuff. Yes, we use a bullet for for physics, so same as Blender and. Uh, and GameKit, so. so uh, um, no, it's uh, it's the, like the same code, but uh, so uh, to author, you you just do it like in Blender normally. You put the rigid body properties, and those are exported to Augur then, and they work the same there because it's the same code. But uh, but it's, we're just using the same library, and. Uh, Yeah, Modrex was what we had earlier, because when we didn't have our own server stuff yet, um, we had this uh, add-on for OpenSIM, Modrex, which allowed uh, using meshes and, uh, and doing some custom game stuff and so forth. So yeah, that's what Modrex is. But, um, but currently, we are not using uh, OpenSIM at all anymore, usually, because um, it's really complex with all the different servers and all the databases. And, and um, and this stuff is much uh, simpler. You don't have to do any configuration. You just run it, and it works. And and it's smaller and faster. So and and re reliable because um, OpenSIM developers themselves say that it's in in alpha still, 
and we do commercial products. So we don't we, we don't use alpha software. We use um, stable mature stuff. So so um, yeah, currently the uh, Motrex is not developed anymore. But uh, if if OpenSIM develops in the future, it's perhaps we again use it somehow. But yeah, yeah. But but now we use this uh, simpler stuff. Yes, uh, Safari has um, WebSockets and WebGL in the uh, at least in the nightly builds, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to WebGL and WebSockets coming to iOS um, next summer or sometime like that, because then we can run in these devices as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and it's cool that the Game Kit has been already running on on Android, so uh, it's the same ogre that we use, so we wanna run on Android as well. But, um, oh, I should have clicked uh, the wrong thing. Sorry, but we really have to yeah, yeah, it's okay. Otherwise, ah, go away. Yep, that's good. Thanks. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah.